It's 2024, you need to know about DNS. But don't worry if it's all gobbledygook to you, I'm gonna try and make it as simple as possible in this video because, well, we've all gotta start somewhere and this is an important thing for you to know if you're a business owner or a marketer or if you're the person responsible for managing emails inside your business. Now, whether you're setting up a new website or managing an existing one, understanding the basics of DNS is crucial because we need emails to work, we need our website to work. So I'm gonna break down the essential information about DNS records that a small business owner needs to understand. For all the super technical stuff, or if there's anything that you need help with right now, you can click the link down below to speak to our professional team for help. So let's start with your domain name. Your domain name is a bit like a listing in a street directory. It's where people go to look up your name and find out where your address is, except that the address is an IP address and it's pointing to a server somewhere on the internet. Now the internet doesn't just literally mean the clouds, it means a server sitting somewhere in a data center and we need to know where to point our website to. And so that's what the domain name does. It gives us an easy to remember name so we can find out where the website is. But there's a number of different records that actually live within that domain name and that's where DNS comes in. Now, DNS itself stands for Domain Name Service, and that translation of what we call a lookup or looking for the IP address, looking for the server which has your website or looking for the server that has your emails is the fundamental purpose of DNS existing. Now, DNS is not going away and it's been around since the dawn of the internet, but it is important this year and especially into the future as many email providers try to reduce spam landing in people's inboxes. Google and other email providers have got much stricter with bulk email senders, making sure that they have their DNS settings correct. And that even counts you too, if you're a small business owner sending marketing emails. If you don't have your DNS records compliant for SPF, DKIM and DMARC, which I'll explain in a moment, well, you may find that your emails are automatically placed in people's spam mailboxes. And if you need a fix for that, well, we've got other videos on the channel on how to address those specific issues. Let's break down the basics of DNS. And we've got a number of important records or categories of DNS settings that make DNS work. Now, A records are the most obvious and the most common records that we use. It's the record that points to a website or points to an IP address. Now, typically that's pointing to a web host somewhere for your website. And when someone types in the root of your domain name or the top level domain name, it's gonna tell it where to go and look for the files for your website. Now that's gonna show up automatically in someone's browser. They're just gonna see the URL rather than the IP address. Everything else happens in the background. Next up are our MX records and MX stands for mail. Now this is going to attach to your domain name and tell people where to send emails if someone sends an email to an email address under your domain. Now this might be Google Workspace, it might be Office 365, it may even be a cPanel server or another private internet provider. But your MX records are gonna dictate where your emails go and you'll actually have multiple MX records with different levels of priority. Just in case one mail server isn't available at a particular point in time, you have backup and sometimes backups on backups. That's MX and that helps emails get to the right inboxes. Next, we have CNAME records and these are like an alias record. They help you to redirect sites if you need to. And so if you want to have a www in front of your domain name, it'll actually redirect that website query to your main website. Now, CNAME records are important if you're using a hosting provider that is shared with lots of other people. You might have one email address that has lots of different websites on there. And so you can use a CNAME record to redirect to your site specifically. Next up, we have text records. And text records are those that help you configure other services on your domain. Maybe you need to configure SPF or DKIM. These are the records that help with anti-spam measures. Well, you're gonna put those details into a text record. And typically, if you need to verify that you're the owner of a domain name, and you wanna be able to say to Google or say to your website provider that yes, I definitely own this domain. Let's host some emails using this domain name. Well, you're gonna be using a text record for that. Think of a text record like additional metadata around your domain name that allows you to authenticate with other services. Now, if you're choosing a domain name registrar to register your domain name with and a DNS hosting provider, well, it's important that you actually put some thought into these. Now, you wanna make sure these providers are legitimate and reputable, so my recommendation is to go with bigger companies and 
definitely avoid going with your web host or your web developer who lives down the street because often one-man band businesses can go out of business and forget to renew your domain name. Now, once you've got your domain name registered, it's time to look at your hosting provider for your DNS. Now, sometimes that'll be in the same place and your domain name registrar will let you also set your DNS settings, but sometimes your DNS settings will actually be with your web host. There is a third option, and that's actually my recommendation, and that is to consider Cloudflare for your DNS hosting. Cloudflare have a free service and they include some pretty cool features like a basic web firewall and also the ability to cache and improve the speed of your website with some magic fancy stuff that it does on your domain name. It's included for free and you can always upgrade to a paid plan if you're looking for more features. They've got a global network of servers that ensure that your DNS requests happen as quickly as possible. Now, I've mentioned web hosting a couple of times and people often ask us, where's the best place to host my website? Now, most hosts these days are on cloud services. They're also using solid state hard drives to be as speedy as possible when giving access to your website. And I would recommend that you ask your web developer or web designer for their recommendations on a fast and secure web host. Common issues that may appear if you don't have your DNS set correctly would be your website not appearing properly or maybe loading slowly. Maybe you've got email delivery issues. They're not being received perhaps, or maybe you're landing in people's spam mailbox when you send email. Well, you can check your DNS settings for errors and check out some of the other videos on our channel on getting your DNS right. And if you get stuck with any of those, you can always click the link down below this video and get in touch with our professional support team. If you've enjoyed this video and you'd like more information about configuring your DNS for Google Workspace, check out one of the other videos down below here. If you have a DNS issue right now and you'd like help to get it fixed, we have a quick fix service available for customers all over the world. Click the link in the description and we'll get started on fixing that for you.